Hello St. Hedwig uh, students and families and staff. Uh, this Mass is for our last day of school. Now, we've had a very strange end to our school year nonetheless, but we must celebrate the fact that the school year has ended and that we have accomplished an awful lot since last September. So let us uh, gather in prayer and to worship our God and give Him thanks for all the good things that we have learned and for the good people in our lives who help us to learn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for the gift of his mercy and ask him for forgiveness for our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, God loves you and has chosen you as his own special people. So be gentle, kind, humble, meek, and patient. Let the peace that comes from Jesus Christ control your thoughts and be grateful. Let the message about Christ completely fill your lives while you use all your wisdom to teach and instruct each other. With thankful hearts, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. Whatever you say or do should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus, as you give thanks to God the Father because of him. The word of the Lord. The response is, Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Shout praises to the Lord, everyone who serves him. Come and praise his name. Let the name of the Lord be praised now and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. From dawn until sunset, the name of the Lord deserves to be praised. The Lord is far above all the nations. He is more glorious than even the heavens. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. No one can compare with the Lord our God. His throne is high above, and he looks down to see the heavens and the earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told the people this story. The kingdom of heaven is like what happens when a farmer plants a mustard seed in his field. Although it is the smallest of all seeds, it grows larger than any garden plant. It becomes a tree. Birds even come and nest on its branches. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These are the readings from the children's lectionary for the last day of school. And they call to mind the need to be thankful and the need to think back on all of the stuff that has happened over this last year and to remember, even from the first days of school, our, your, your teachers and your parents have been planting seeds of new knowledge. You know, as you get into each new grade, you learn a whole new series of facts that you didn't know before, or you, and you, you slowly but surely conquer different kinds of concepts in math and science and in language, in history, and the older you get, the more complicated and complex these ideas become. But when it started, it was just like Jesus says, like a seed that's planted. And over the course of the last nine months, wow, nine months, over the course of these last nine months, that little bit of knowledge has been growing and growing into something bigger than itself, something that you've been able to integrate into your mind so that you know more, you understand more, and you're able to live your life in this world with a little bit more um, knowledge and ability to, to comprehend what's going on in the world around you. The older we get, the more um, 
complicated these concepts become, but it all keeps building on very simple ideas. It started as a simple idea at the beginning of the year, and over the course of the year, it's fleshed out into something really big. But as what Jesus says is that when we invest ourselves in faith, in knowledge, in good works, it's just like it's a little seed that we plant. And because of the investment that we put time and energy and effort into making something happen, it grows into something great. So we have, for example, our, our, uh, our graduating eighth graders. They graduated last week, and they've been on this journey of discovery in our Catholic school for upwards of nine years even, if they were here in kindergarten. And every year they have built on the knowledge of the years that came before. And at the end of each year, when they graduated up to the next grade, they took what they learned that previous year, and now it applies and grows even greater in the next year. So we've come to the end of the school year, and this has been very obviously one of the most unusual ends to a school year that we can have. But I want to take a moment now to, as St. Paul says in the second reading that we, or the first reading, that we really need to practice gratitude. And the first people I would like you to, to as students, to, to be thankful for are your parents who make uh, Catholic education possible for you. There are a lot of options for where you can go to school. Your parents wanted you at St. Hedwig. And we want you to come back next year, and we want you to even consider bringing other family members and friends or neighbors that you know to our school so that they may also enjoy the benefits of the, the education that we're able to offer here and the faith and the morality that we can offer here that you don't get in public schools. So to thank your parents, because they sacrifice a lot to make that happen. But I also want you to, to thank your teachers, especially in the last couple of months. The, the reality is that the teachers have a, a hard job to do. You know, they, they, they come to school every day and they have a whole lesson plan and they have a whole bunch of stuff they're going to do and, and teach you that day or that week. And then when this whole quarantine stuff happened, they had to change all of their lesson plans and put them all online. Instead of it just being the normal way that they would have done their work, your teachers had to do a lot more work to make distance learning possible. That took a lot more of their time, a lot more of their effort, and they had to learn all new things too. I mean, I've never had to try to do distance learning before. I can't even imagine how complicated it was to, you know, work with cameras and work with uh, slides and work with pictures and, and videos and try to make something happen or a Zoom meeting with the whole class. I, I, my mind is boggled just thinking of it. And your teachers made that happen. It's not like they said, oh, well, quarantine, I guess we're done they continued teaching you from home. And probably your parents had to step in and, and help a lot more with this too, which is another reason to be thankful to your parents. Your education at home required a lot more intentionality. You know, you come to school and bam, you're here and you're gonna learn stuff. But when you're at home, there's a thousand distractions. It could be any number of reasons why you're not gonna do stuff or, or things get weird at home and you don't know what to do. But look at how much harder you had to work and how much harder your teachers had to work to finish out the school year. So there's a lot to be uh, thankful for. And to be thankful for our principal, Miss Rucker, because she had to manage all of this from the top and work with all of the staff and help everybody to figure out how we were going to do school for a, a whole quarantine time that we didn't even know how long it would last. Well, now we're looking forward to coming back together in the fall in a new school year. On this last day of the year, then, let us give thanks. Let us give thanks for the things that we've learned, for the things that we've experienced, for the friendships that we've made. Let us give thanks to our parents, our teachers, our principal, and all of those who have helped us, coaches and, and uh, the, the, the room moms and everybody else that's made stuff happen for all of us in this last school year. May God um, bless them all and bless you. Now, we're getting into the summer which doesn't mean that you just take a vacation from everything, because you can't. We never stop learning. We never stop reading. We never stop praying. The, just because it's summertime doesn't mean you just say, that's it, no more of anything for three months. No, yes, that's what quarantine has already felt like. But there were things to do. You probably have a reading list for the summer. Maybe you've got summer plans, depending on how things open up. But I want to remind you um, that uh, our, our masses are starting to happen again on Sundays um, here at St. Hedwig Church. And probably if you're, if you're not at St. Hedwig Church and you go to other parishes, 
all the parishes are starting to open up again. So I want you to remember, don't take a vacation from Mass. Don't take a vacation from God. Don't take a vacation from daily prayer. Everything that you have been doing for the last few months, um, keep doing. But now you get to add more stuff in. Once you know places open up and once churches open up, you'll have a little bit more freedom. I want you just to remember not only to be grateful, but to plan what's going to happen in the next few months so that you can continue to act on that gratitude by returning uh, praise to God, gathering together with family and friends in church, and that um, by the time we get together in the fall, hopefully all of this stuff will be passed and, and things will be back to somewhat normal, the way we, use, we, we expect to experience church and school and family life and restaurants and all those other things that we like so much. May God bless you and keep you safe in this uh, school year, in the summertime, as we look forward to our new school year. Let us offer our petitions to our Father. We pray, Lord, for your Catholic, you know, the Catholic Church throughout the world, especially in places where Christians are suffering, whether they're suffering from this quarantine, from this illness, or from persecution, or war, or famine, or natural disasters. Lord, bless all peoples of all nations with peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless our nation with peace in this time where they're People are fighting and demonstrating and rioting and all kinds of strange things are happening. Lord, put peace in the minds and hearts of, of everyone, police officers and, and uh, regular folks who are out about and, and, and protesting and demonstrating. Lord, let there be peace on earth and in our homes, in our streets, in our nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, in thanksgiving for the school year that now is coming to a, to a close and for all of those who have made this school year possible for us, our parents, our teachers, our administration and staff, uh, Raul, who keeps our, our buildings clean for us, for all of the people in our lives, Lord, who have guided us in, these last, in this last year, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are sick, for those who have died. We lift up to you in our own minds and hearts, our family members and friends, perhaps people we haven't been able to see because they've been ill or because of social distancing, Lord, we lift up to you all of those uh, that we are concerned about. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, thank you for sending us Jesus. Thank you for giving us this Eucharist and, and, and allowing us to once again be able to come back to church. May we experience your love every day through family and friends and faith. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. In this mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you as with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us this prayer. Actually, he taught it to his apostles and then taught it to their followers. On down through the ages, chances are your parents taught you this prayer before you ever learned it in church or in school. Let us all now pray together in a prayer that someone wanted us to know that came from God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments, and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And now I'd like you to join with me in, in making an act of spiritual communion. Well, very soon we'll be able to, to be able to start receiving communion again. And, uh, but for all these weeks and months now that we have not been able to go to Mass publicly, all we can do is express a desire to receive communion. I was able to receive today, which is a great privilege for me as a priest, and I want you to join me in reciting this prayer for a spiritual communion. So repeat after me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. and unite myself completely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to doing what is right. Through Christ our Lord, amen. So, once again, thank you to uh, everyone uh, in the school, um, uh, teachers and staff and volunteers and parents, and to you students for your, your, uh, your hard work in this last year. You deserve a little bit of a vacation now. Uh, but remember, you're not vacating from learning, from family, or from church, or any of those other things. It's just you get to relax and do things a little bit differently for a while. Um, Please check our parish website for uh, what's going on with Sunday and weekday Mass, um, the requirements for wearing masks and social distancing and all that kind of stuff is, is all going to be um, going on for a little while. But I look forward to, to seeing many of you again in the, in the weeks to come. Also, uh, there are a couple of our school teachers who are retiring this year. And so um, there are a couple of new positions that we'll have to hire, new teachers that we'll have to bring on staff. And hopefully there will also be a lot of new families in our school. So I look forward to uh, meeting a lot of new people. And I ask you who are here and who know each other very well to remember to be open and welcoming to all of those new faces that will join us in the fall. May God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you soon around the table of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and have your vacation.